Well, good morning. We're continuing on today with the commentary on the book of Jeremiah, and we're up to chapter 4. The heading for chapter 4 is Judah threatened with war. Verse 1, If you will return, O Israel, says the Lord, return unto me, and if you put away your abominations out of my sight, then shall you not remove. Oh, if, if you return, O Israel, says the Lord, if you return to me, and if you give up your abominations completely out of my sight, and not stray or waver. And you shall swear the Lord lives in truth, in judgment, and in righteousness, and the nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him they shall give glory. Thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and sow not among thorns. When Jesus was telling the people and his disciples about the parable of the sower, he was in fact reminding them of what prophet Jeremiah had already prophesied in the scriptures, right here in the book of Jeremiah chapter 4. Circumcise yourself to the Lord and take away the foreskins of your heart. You men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury comes forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. God says, dedicate yourself back to the Lord by circumcising your heart, you men of Judah and Jerusalem. Otherwise, my fury shall depend upon you and descend upon you like an unquenchable fire. In other words, you can't put it out because of your sins and your evil practices. Declare unto Judah and publish in Jerusalem and say, Blow you the trumpets in the land. Cry out together and say, Assemble yourselves and let us go into the defended cities. Good Almighty commands Jeremiah to declare his proclamations in Judah and publish them in Jerusalem, to sound the trumpet to the people to gather together for them to say, Let us go to the defended cities for our protection. Because in the next verse, God Almighty makes clear his intentions for his rebellious peoples. Verse 6, Stand, Set up a standard toward Zion. Retire, stay not, for I will bring evil from the north and great destruction. Where there is evil, God raises up a standard against them. And in this case, God is raising up a standard against Zion. Strengthen, retire, leave, do not stay, for I will bring evil from the north and great destruction. God is warning them, get out while you can, because I'm going to bring great judgment upon the cities in Judah. The lion comes up from his thicket, and the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. He has gone forth from his place to make the land desolate, and thy city shall be laid waste, without an inhabitant. The lion has raised himself up out of his lair, and the destroyer of the Gentile nations is coming forth, to make the land and the cities laid waste, and in ruins, completely desolate, without a single inhabitant. And then the subheading says, A grievous lamentation for the miseries of Judah. For this, gird yourself with sackcloth, lament and howl, for the fierce anger of the Lord is not turned back from us. For this reason, gird up your lines in sackcloth, cry out, lament and howl, travail before the Lord, for the fierce anger of the Lord has not been withheld from us. It shall come to pass on that day, says the Lord, that the heart of the king shall perish, and the heart of the princes shall be astonished. And the prophets shall wonder. And at God's appointed time, says the Lord, that the understanding, faith, and trust of the king shall be brought to nothing. They shall all fail, and the prince's faith shall also fail them. The priests shall be appalled and astonished, and the prophets shall be astounded and gazed 
dazed with horror at the outcome. The priest shall be appalled and astonished, and the prophet shall be astounded and gazed with horror at the outcome. Then said I, O Lord God, surely you have greatly deceived this people of Jer and Jerusalem, saying, You shall have peace, whereas the sword reaches into the soul. Then I said, Ah, oh, Lord God, surely you have greatly deceived this people and all of Jerusalem, when you shod, said that they would have peace, when all along you were planning to bring swords upon their souls. Verse 11, And at that time it shall be said to this people and to Jerusalem, a dry wind of the high places in the wilderness towards the daughter of my people, not to fan, not to cleanse. At that time it shall be said to the people and to Jerusalem, A dry wind is blowing from the high places in the wilderness towards the daughter of my people, but it is not to fan them or to cleanse them. In fact, it is to destroy them. Even a dull wind and a full wind from those places shall come unto me. Now also will I give sentence against them. Even a full wind, that is a hurricane of their sins, from those places shall come up to them, and I will issue utter judgment upon them. Verse 13. Behold, he shall come up as the clouds, and his chariot shall be as whirlwinds. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe unto us! For we are spoiled. In the New Living Translation it says, Behold, the destroyer of the nations from the north shall come up against you like clouds, and his chariots shall be like whirlwinds as they approach, with the horses being faster than eagles. Woe unto us, you cry out, for we are destroyed. O Jerusalem, wash your hearts from wickedness, that you may be saved. How long shall these vain thoughts lodge within you? Jerusalem, wash and cleanse your hearts from all of your wickedness, that you may be saved from spiritual death. How long shall these vain thoughts of yours remain in your hearts? For a voice declares from Dan, the publisher's afflictions from Mount Ephraim, a voice of judgment is declared from Dan in the north, and published from Mount Ephraim, the mountain range that separates Israel from Judah. Make you mention to the nations, Behold, publish against Jerusalem, that watchers come from a far country, and give out their voices against the cities of Judah. Proclaim to the nations and the surrounding nations, Before, behold, publish this judgment against Jerusalem, that enemies from a far country are coming to destroy the cities of Judah. They're given plenty of warning. As keepers of a field, are they against her roundabout? Because she has been rebellious against me, says the Lord. Are all the surrounding property owners, are, are they against Judah? Because she has been rebellious against me, says the Lord. Your ways and your doings have procured these things unto you. This is your wickedness, because it is bitter, because it reaches into your heart. As a result of your ways and your actions, you have brought this punishment upon yourselves. This wickedness is a bad taste in your mouth, and it reaches deep down right into your heart and your soul. My bowels, my bowels, I am pained at my heart. My heart makes a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace because you have heard, O oh, my soul, the sound of the trumpets, the alarm of war. All the people are crying out. It is not only the prophets. <coughs> my guts are churning inside me. My heart is troubled within me. The walls of my heart is crying out in pain and anguish. I cannot hold my peace any longer because my soul has heard the sounds of the trumpets. The alarm call for war. Destruction upon destruction is cried out for the whole land is spoiled. Suddenly all my tents are spoiled and my curtains in a moment. Suddenly the people cry out that there is a total destruction for the whole land has been made worthless. All of the households and their furnishings Everything is destroyed as if hit by a tsunami. 
How long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? Lord, how long must I wait seeing our standard, showing the way of the escape and hear the sound of the trumpet, sounding our retreat? Sounding our defeat? For well, my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children. And they have no understanding. Yet they are wise to do evil, but to, to do good they have no knowledge or understanding. My people are foolish. They have no knowledge of me in their hearts. They are habitual drunkards, children without understanding. They are always desiring to do evil, but they have no knowledge about what is good. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light, and in the beginning of the earth was without form, and was void of all life forms, and there was no light in the heavens. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all of the hills moved slightly. I looked and saw the mountains created by the Lord, and all of the mountains of the hills trembled and moved slightly, and beheld... I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all of the birds of the heavens had fled. And I looked again, and lo, there was no man on the earth. It was deserted, and all of the birds of the air had fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful places were a wilderness, and all of the cities were broken down at the presence of the Lord, and by his fierce anger. And I looked, and all of the vineyards and orchards were destroyed like a wilderness. And all of the cities were broken into rubble by the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. And thus, as the Lord said, the whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. The Lord said, this whole land shall be desolate, but I will not completely destroy it. For this, I shall, for this shall the earth mourn, and the heavens shall, shall be black, because I have spoken it. I have purposed it, and will not repent, neither will I turn back from it. Because of this terrible sin, the earth shall mourn, and the heavens shall be covered with black darkness, because I have spoken it, and I will not repent from it, neither will I turn back from it, or change my mind, says the Lord. The whole city shall flee from the noise of the horsemen and home. They shall go into thickets and climb up onto the rocks. Every city shall be forsaken, and not a man shall dwell therein. The whole city shall flee from the cavalry and the archers. They shall hide themselves in thickets and climb up upon the cliffs. Every city shall be forsaken, and not a single man shall be left to dwell there. And when you are spoiled, what will you do? Though you clothe yourself with crimson, though you deck yourself with ornaments of gold, though you rendest your face with painting, in vain shall you make yourself fair. They lovers will despise thee. They will seek your life. And when you are despoiled, what will you do? Though you clothe yourself in crimson garments and deck yourself out with golden ornaments, and paint yourself and your eyes. You make yourself irresistible. But your lovers will despise you and want to kill you. For I have heard the voice as of a woman in travail. And the anguish of her that brings forth her first child. The voice of the daughter of Zion that dewails her. That spread her hand saying, Woe is me now! For my soul is wearied because of murders. For I have heard sounding like the woman in labor, travailing and in anguish, as she is giving birth with her first child, the voice of the daughter of Zion, her screams out as she spreads for the hand, saying, Woe is me now, for my soul is weary from the sight of all of these murders. And so end this chapter 4.